The act of fly rod and cast protected with trestle CRC rod holder. A Montana product popping up on car and truck tops. Today we tag along as trestle builds on its mountain reputation. And later, a classic lure that can only be found at a small little fishing shop in northern Minnesota. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Fly rods, the essence of a perfect cast. This, a sport of pursuit with tools worth protecting. The work of this Montana shop. Yep, this is the storage system here. It's the CRC system, we call it. It stands for convertible rod carry. Yeah, so it goes from 44 inches, telescopes out, to about 10 feet, 4 inches. John Smiggy engineered the rooftop fly rod carrier. All right, so this is the CRC system, the fly rod carrier. One of the things that we did with our patent is we put our reels facing up. It's really unique. Nobody else does that. Um, and that's just so you're protecting your guides. You know, you're not resting on top of those when you're driving around. The work of trestle. A suddenly bustling outdoor company based in the capital city of Helena. Well, the one on top, we went, launched on Kickstarter about five years ago, and that's all 3D printed. That's 1.0, 1.5, and then 2.0, which is where we're at now. Morgan is my business partner and I both lost our jobs, and that's where the name Trestle came from, just because we were designing locomotives, trestle bridges. I was the fly fisher, he was a mountain biker, so we got started getting contracts in those industries and pretty quickly realized that's all we really wanted to do. Dressel's building process starts with raw stock parts. Over here you can see where we get our raw aluminum extrusion shapes. We have four different uh, dies that we use. They also take delivery of ABS plastic. Bryce over here is building the liners that go on the inside of our telescopic rod carrier. So you can see some of the raw tubes over here um, that we get extruded in four different sizes. Yeah, right now I'm just welding our different pieces that go together to form the little liner. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting stoppers on these. The whole way this works is when you go to pull each part out, rather than it sliding the entire way, it gets caught. So now the four pieces all fit together, right? It's a little bit like that old Star Wars lightsaber toy a lot of you used to have, right? This thing expands and contracts. It won't ever fall apart. Basically, and we're just grinding that down so it has a little bit of extra stick onto in here, you know? Next step, we're drilling the holes. And adding spring buttons, getting ready for Kelly Wilson's station. Grab her out of here. Set her up here on, this is our orange station. Kelly assembles the aluminum parts first. All right, so now we'll install our lock latch, our slam latch. Make sure that we get a nice good fit with this, with this hatch. Now he adds interior parts. And just four little screws to secure those collars into the housing unit. Finishes the build, and now Janelle Johnson steps in. And I do everything from obviously tagging and pricing to all the individual packing that goes into it. Cheap pads and packs for delivery. There you have it. Fly shots, shields, backcountry, 
We have recently sent some stuff to Germany even, but mostly here in the U.S. Units now ready to go out the door and onto fishing rigs. Something still so special and worth celebrating for Team Trestle. I'm from Helena, but we started the company in Washington State where I went to school. Hadn't seen any in Washington State, and I came back to Helena to visit. Pulled into Safeway to grab a six pack before I went to my dad's house, and there's my first one I ever saw in the parking lot. So that's yeah, a pretty big deal. Still feels good. The CRC, a simple tool of the fly fishing trade. Yeah, I've got one on my little Subi out there. Just got one a couple months ago, and I think it's awesome. Yeah, they're great. Storage and safety, good for the gear, and great for peace of mind. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Warner's Dock, Aquarius Home Services, Spire Credit Union, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth, celebrate responsibly. Grand Marais, Minnesota. A quirky little town that sits on the shores of Lake Superior. Known for its access to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, it's one of the last stops for anglers to load up on supplies. And there's no better place than Beaver House. Known by all passing through, cause it's pretty hard to miss. The outside is really appealing with all the, the fish hanging out of it. It was easy to find. Tyson Cronberg has handcrafted lures since he was a kid. My farthest memory is when I was probably three or four. Yeah. I've been working in here my entire life. I used to pack night crawlers when I was five, six years old. Count out night crawlers, put them in a bag and twist it up and I'd make a penny a dozen or whatever. Then I'd go walk down to Joins and buy some candy. <laughs> his love for fishing comes from the co-founder of the shop, his dad. My dad and my uncle started in 1964, so it's just been our family since then. And you can't forget about his furry business partner. That's Super Mario. He's been working here 12 years, I tell people. Beaver House is home to one-of-a-kind lures. We're making beaver flicks. It's a float rig. It floats your bait about a foot and a half, two feet off the bottom. And that's where the fish are, and that's why it works so good. I guarantee them to catch every kind of fish there is or your money back in the summertime, I double guarantee them for ice fishing. Sounds like a dream come true. And all it takes is four simple materials. It's a split ring, a blade, and a swivel, and a hook. Easy enough, now time to get started. First you take a, a split ring and then you open it up. Next, you gotta choose a blade. Tyson's preference, the brighter, the better. Sometimes fluorescent orange is better, sometimes fluorescent pink is better. With the color selected, just a couple more steps and it's ready for the line. And then you put the hook on, then you put the swivel on. This is the reason we're still on this corner for 57 years. There isn't too many people that know, don't know about beaver flicks. <laughs> Everyone in, the, in Minnesota probably knows about beaver flicks. Word of mouth spread beyond state lines. I send beaver flicks and my dad's float rigs out to different states all over the world. I got three beaver flicks. Teacher told us that they handmade the tackle here, so I thought that was really cool and that would be something special to bring home. Beaver flicks also makes a sister lure, the beaver flick spoon with the same guarantee, but for the trophies. Lake trout, salmon, Chinook salmon, coho salmon, steelhead. Making this one takes a little more time. First you heat up that spoon, then you take the powder paint and you just sort of dab it on. I usually put white down as a primer. The primer paint ensures the lure pops below the surface. Heat that baby up good. Then comes the fun part, tie-dye. Then we'll put some pink on this one, and some blue. And we'll put some orange, 
Oh, it's such a chartreuse. They call that color the Wonder Bread color. <laughs> then if you dip it in the cold water right away, then it, the paint sticks to it a lot better. And bam, you have a spoon. And the colors come out pretty good. It's a lot of fun. I never really was artistic until I started making spoons. A Grand Marais classic that just might help you catch the fish of your dreams. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Thorough Good Boots, Alex Pro Firearms, Casey's, Guy Metals, and by Russ Davis Wholesale. If you ever visit this historic St. Paul warehouse, be ready for a workout. I have to have 7,500 steps a day. I get like 12,000. Duff Thury leads all exercise. Get your Fitbits on, boys. Duff is a floor stomping, wood buzzing, blast of caffeine. What does a Lucha Libre Mexican wrestler have to do with musky fishing? Oh, everything. Just look around and then listen. I make a lip lock. Well, we have a mat lock. I made a pile driver when I first started. We have the headlocks, which are a little thinner bait. Those are all wrestling holes, so they go with the theme of the business. The work aprons might say it all. Used to push pencils, now I push baits. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Mark Westland helps Duff grind away days building big musky baits. The only thing better than fishing with musky baits is making musky baits. Women like shiny things. Men like shiny things. Fish like shiny things. Colorful, handcrafted lures with reputation. I think there was four state records caught on my baits last year. Maybe that's why the crew can't keep up with orders. Life's good. Life's real good. Mm -hmm. Supernatural's story starts with a dog named Ling Ling. My dog would walk, you know, back and forth across the sidewalk smelling this and sniffing that. It'd be great to make a bait that did that. Duff's answer looked like this. He cut away from a career building furniture to tackle fishing. The furniture making skills and design skills translated baits. Scott McGlasson shares shop space with Duff. Back in the day, they built furniture. I love the colors. I love the glitter. Some of them have maybe an outsider art quality to them. They're great. It's the lure of this work in this building. A century-old cannery now full of new life and new workshops. We're makers. We're shop rats. We love being in here. A co-op of sorts that comes with perks. By law, I have to give my guys a break, okay? So Duff walks, well, almost half runs downstairs. Here's the dark, okay, that's okay. For coffee break, it's good to have neighbors like this. Why would I have a cure when I have top-notch coffee place like this here? This is what I do, okay. It's great to get into work and it's great being here and I miss it when I'm not here. I guess that's a good job. <laughs> Duff's work always seems to attract a crowd. You like that one? This is a carbon fiber that I put on there. He talks fishing, he sells fishing, and he lives it too. We started your bait today, too. <laughs> when he's not making baits. We really want to make a fishing lure that works, but we also want to make one that's special to the guy who buys them. And then we get pictures of people that are catching, you know, monster fish, fish of a lifetime. And the stories we hear, it's just really rewarding. 
stories of the big ones that do not get away. Musky Fishing's new reality created by the supernatural. I like to catch them on my base and, and I love it when other people catch them on my base. It works for me and I want to share that with everybody. Hey there, I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. And I'm Alexa Spore. If you're a fan of Made for the Outdoors and want to know more about the show, be sure to like us on Facebook. And follow us on Instagram for cool behind the scenes looks at what we're working on. And don't forget, if you've got a show idea, be sure to drop us a note. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Casey's. Grain Belt Premium Beer. Ice Castle Fish House and RV. Lake life defines us, but our love inevitably led to change. Lakes, Minnesota, it's our culture. We love them and invasive species are a threat to what we love about our lake. Over time, we the users somehow introduced non-native plants and critters to many of our watery ecosystems. An act with consequences. But one man would never paint any picture of defeat. Gino Oko prefers to present hope and color. His larger than life message. So I got involved with this project through um, freshwater stewardship and you know I was interested. So I'm like, you know what, let's let's do it. It's to bring awareness to awkward invasive species. From Gino's perspective. And then I look them on top as high as I can, looking down. <laughs> Although painting a piece this big comes without shoes and on tippy toes. So now the tricky part is um, knowing where I've painted so I don't step on it. Now once I paint here, I can't go through here anymore. I have to go all the way around. This is pretty much 95% done. So I put in AIS because I feel as though, you know, when someone sees it, you know, on, on their boat or on their sail, they, like, out of, Curiosity is what is that? What what does it mean? And I like the um, the message behind it and what it's for. For an aquatic spectacle that attracts a weekend crowd. We just lucked out with today. I thought we were going to get stormed out. Really, thank you for for coming down and celebrating with us. The focus of this project really started with our interactions with the lake and aquatic invasive species, but making sure we brought a diverse voice and diverse artists here to share that experience with you, to connect us to our history and to our lake and our actions on Lake Minnetonka. A grant project to educate people on invasive species. Five colorful sails. In their, in their actual purpose. The work of five creative minds. I'm very excited. These sails turned out gorgeous, and the artists were having so much fun. I enjoy fishing for carp, even though they're an invasive species, so I wanted to, to highlight them as, as my focal point. You know, they've done murals and things before, but an odd-shaped canvas with, um, with inks that nobody's ever touched before. It, it definitely absorbed ink a little bit more than a, a, a typical canvas would. We didn't get any white paint, so there was no erasing. Just amazing. The artist told us a little bit about it and the, with the fish and the, how um, important it is that we keep like our nature clean. A message best understood. Let's go sailing. On the water, seems everyone wants a ride. Come here, baby. It looks very artsy. 
beautiful. Yeah, it's very lovely. I'm glad the wind is picking up. So. Sandra Alb sails with the new AIS billboards. They are the exact same branding as our usual sails, so it's just like sailing normal, but with more to look at. The art of a message inspired by nature's need for our help. Everybody loves enjoying our lakes and for them to, you know, stay what we're used to, um, you know, being comfortable to swim in, fish, ski, sail, enjoy those lakes. Um, the aquatic invasive species really change how our lakes operate. Being able to even just raise awareness for, for people to understand that that's an issue is, is a big deal.